Hi, welcome back, friends. It's Joy in the Quarantine. This is the day the Lord has made. There are reasons to be re rejoicing today. Yes, even today, uh, while you're in quarantine. It looks like you'll be here a while longer. So um, you need to be reminded of what the Bible reminds you of. This letter especially, Philippians, this chapter is beautiful. Today's verse is absolutely excellent for people like us who need to be reminded of the reasons we do have to rejoice no matter where we are or our circumstances. Paul has been talking about in the previous verses all the things that he could boast about and brag about and be very proud of. He calls that kind of dangerous. Worse, worse than negative, that could be a loss. I consider that a, a detriment if it's dragging me down and I'm thinking my worth and my future are all wrapped up in those things. That, get that out of there then, because I, I only know one thing that has surpassing value, and that's knowing Christ Jesus, my Lord. That's where we pick it up in verse, verse 8, halfway through. He says, I consider them garbage, that I may gain Christ and be found in him. Not having a righteousness of my own that comes from the law, but that is which that which is through faith in Christ. The righteousness that comes from God on the basis of faith. So that's God's word, friends. Um, this is a, a testimony of faith, and it's excellent. Um, we, we would do well to just repeat this word for word um, and, and say, this is my life's motto. Um, I consider stuff garbage. The word has been cleaned up. Ancient Bible dictionaries that, that would describe um, what does this Greek word mean and this Greek word mean have been cleaned up and scrubbed so that they say, um, this is garbage, this is scum, this is muck, instead of saying, you know, what comes out the south end of a northbound mule, or mix that with the, the gunk in your kitchen sink, or whatever is in the bottom of your garbage pan, and mix that all together in a blender and drink that. Oh, this is, this is garbage if it's rising above the level of Jesus. If, it's, if he, he's being replaced and moved off his throne, or if when God welcomes me into heaven at, at the gate and says, this is, this is heaven, here we are, why should I let you in? And you start to say, well, because I have done this. Blah, that is garbage. Get that out. It's nasty. Count that stuff out. You don't need anything. You don't need to bring anything to the table. Um, he counts that other stuff as, as garbage because he knows there's, there's one thing important, gaining Christ. And the answer when God greets you is to say, because Jesus, <laughs> because Jesus, look what he did. Look how he let me in here. Look how he's saved me and redeemed me. That's the right answer. He's the only way, the truth, and the life. We point, start that sentence with Jesus because Jesus said I could come in here and you'll always get in. Um, he's that, he's that um, influential with his father. Jesus let me in here. Uh, that I may gain Christ. Be found in him. What does it mean to be found in Jesus? You could think about your, your Christian witness, but kind of what he's talking about here sounds like the last day kind of thing. Or at your death. Um, whenever that day is. That I'm, I'm found in Christ. And uh, that, that God sees me standing in faith. In the Christian faith. Um, standing right next to Jesus at the end. That might be um, when, Je when, when Jesus returns on this world's last day, but I don't know what day that's going to be. So I don't know when to start, start being found in Jesus on that day, uh, unless I'm just every day found in Jesus, right? Including today, including this minute that I'm found in Jesus right now. Uh, because whether he calls me home or whether he comes back, being found in Jesus is the most important thing. And, and that righteousness that covers me and that makes me uh, worthy of getting into heaven is, is great. It's not my own. I'm wearing somebody else's righteousness. This is a beautiful gospel passage because it reminds you that, yes, you might be a nice person, but that's not why you're in heaven. Um, at a funeral, it's very common to say, oh, he was so, such a good guy. Uh, she was so nice. And that's true. But that's not why anybody gets into heaven. They get to heaven because they wear a righteousness, not their own, but not what comes from, from the law. They, they kept this rule. They always did this. That's not it. But that which is through faith in Christ, the righteousness that comes 
from God to me on the basis of faith. Uh, there's no reason that God should swing his gavel and say, not guilty, um, other than Jesus died on the cross to pay for everyone's sins. There's no reason that when, when, when judgment day comes, that he moves you over uh, to be with the sheep and to be welcomed into eternity in glory, other than he's given you faith. You trust in Jesus and you're found in him on the basis of faith. What a great reminder for you, whether you're starting your day or wrapping up your day, whether it's going to be a great day or it's going to be a horrible day for your obedience, for your sanctification. I hope it's great. I hope it was great. But that's not why you're saved. That's not why you are rejoicing. You're rejoicing because you wear someone else's righteousness. You are found in Christ. And you do have that faith, that grace that comes from God. Um, God, keep you solid in that the rest of today and through this week and this month. Keep you rejoicing because you know you wear Christ's righteousness. Until next time.